And I want to talk a little bit today about uh, the forgotten. Um, currently, statistics, America has one of the largest prison populations in the history of the world. Um, I don't think the public realizes um, that it is um, not just a combination of police state, but of, of corporate oppression. Um, greed and privatization even of, of, of so-called corrections and what it is is a form of, of a modern slavery for for certain kind of corporate government you know um, corrupt marriages and profiting prisoners make, you know not just make license plates and stuff but they print all those you know, government documents, tax forms, and all that paperwork, you know, is prison industry. And uh, there's so much more that they do, uh, it, but it's it's form of modern slavery, basically. Now, uh, um, let me tell you about some of the men and, uh, I mean, uh, prison is like a microcosm of our own um, social, um, our own society, our own social system. Um, in other words, uh, among prisoners, there's those that you know are really minor criminals. Um, in other words, probably shouldn't even be locked up. They're not any. They're not any different than your average Joe walking down the street, really. Um, they just unfortunately got caught for some of the things all the rest of you haven't gotten caught for in your lifetimes. About half the prison population doesn't belong there. There's a whole bunch of them that are over-sentenced, wrongly sentenced, um, just enslaved, oppressed, poor persons. And basically the number one crime for, for a prisoner is poverty. Poverty. Born into poverty. Um, oppression and um, a system that they just um, suffer from. They, it's, it's a system that, you know, um, takes a certain part of the population and enslave, enslaves them. It's actually enslaving the entire population um, and then they tell you that you're paying for it all and no, that's not the case at all. That's just an excuse to extract what little poor wages you're actually given to make you even more oppressed. It's, it's it's a system of slavery and it's 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 conducted by the greediest and the most arrogant as far as I'm concerned you know demonic pieces of filth that ever walked on two legs the entire system on earth socially engineered under the world bank and and the world banksters gangsters criminals and uh, all that crap they're spraying in the atmosphere you read my note on strategies of war your lives are under attack you're being oppressed and enslaved and you're and you're they're intentionally increasing the death rate in other words lowering the lifespans and 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 decreasing birth rates in other words killing off you know infants in other words population management worldwide is under these incredible scum arrogant scum they don't have the right to do any of that crap and and the sooner we arrest them, the better for all the rest of humanity. But anyway, I want to talk about some of the men uh, behind prison. Okay, that definitely gangsters, right? Um, you know, there was. It, it's, it's almost like a matter of survival, right? If you're by yourself, even in prison, it's not so easy. Um, you're relying on your own strength, so they create these networks, you know, for themselves. They call them gangs, right? And whether it's uh, the Bloods, the Crips, the M.A.s, Mexican Mafia, and Aryans, you know, you name it, there's there's gangs. And gangs are just groups of, of men trying to survive as best they know how in, in, in adverse um, circumstances. <coughs> so, uh, so I'm not saying that, uh, 
I approve. I'm just saying that it's an inevitable result of, 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 of a hostile environment, of, of being raised in a system of, of crushing poverty and oppression. And it, it, it turns men into these things. You know, it's, 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 it's all evil, it's all wrong, and it's, it's from the highest levels, and, and, and it could be changed. It could be changed. Change radically for the better. Okay, so we we have a system of immigration that's all wrong as well. This open immigration um, policy is a catastrophic, you know, um, policy, and there is no harmony with people that want to rape, rob, pillage, plunder, murder. And and Islam is a demonic cult, and um, that teaches people to do such things, and they certainly should not be loose on on earth, and they absolutely shouldn't be loose in our nations. So uh, somebody calling themselves a Muslim should be completely and totally immediately under arrest wherever they show their face on planet Earth. And because they're saying that I intend to commit crimes against you and your children against anybody at any time of my choosing. And, and serious crimes, violent crimes, rape, murder, etc. Acts of terrorism, um, br you know, brutal acts, acts of barbarism, acts that should have been you know, I've never even thought of, let alone done. So some of the men in prison, you know, are, are you know belong there. And they're they're violent criminals. They haven't repented. They're they're still committing their crimes. And as far as I'm concerned, the system needs to to be changed in that regard. In other words, there's no reason why you know um, we should um, house, feed, and and prolong the life of somebody that totally is 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 still violently raping, still violently murdering other people, even in prison. In other words, if you go down as a three-time loser with a lifer and you still commit your crimes, you should be executed. And swiftly. And I, I say doing away with capital punishment is wrong. And I understand why it was done away with. It's like um, there's a sober realization that we're all criminals to a certain extent, right? That's the whole reason why, you know, when... Christ was confronted about his law, you know, you know, are we going to stone her? What should we do? And he's like, well, let the one, you know, without sin, let the one who's never committed a crime cast the first stone. Nobody could. Because we all know we're all sinners. And that's the reason, that's the real reason why capital punishment was done away with, but I'm not saying that it was necessarily right. Even though we're all criminals, we're not necessarily all and raping, robbing, pillaging, plundering, murdering psychopaths, right? Um, in other words, somebody that, you know, murders and doesn't stop and, and just keeps on doing it even behind prison walls, as far as I'm concerned. Now, it's one thing if it's, you know, you're in a violent situation and, and self-defense, that's a totally different thing. Um, society is not given the same benefit of the doubt as, as law enforcement. Law enforcement, you know, shoots somebody because they thought, you know, they had a weapon and they don't even go to trial most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time. They don't even go to trial. But uh, that happens to a citizen, oh my God. You know, in, um, huge attorney fees, you know, for the most part. For the most part, the pol police don't just um, say, yep, yeah, that was an obvious case of self-defense. We'll just leave that one, you know, loose. I mean, even if somebody um, um, defends their own family, like, uh, you know, home invasion and you know, attacking their own, you know, children or, or themselves or their or their wives, and and if it's a police, you know, and shot on the spot, dead, and and carcass carted away, and maybe a cursory investigation, maybe, possibly a heroic citation, you know, in other words, they get praised for doing the right thing, but a citizen does the same thing, and um, you got to consult an attorney and 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 prove your innocence. In other words, it's, it's not it's not uh, innocent until proven guilty. It's guilty to proven innocent if you're a poor citizen. If you don't have a badge and a gun. Two sets of laws going on here and that, and that, that type of injustice of the police state has to stop. And people have to get pissed off enough to say that's got to stop right now. And, and they have to stand up. They have to stand up in, in in great numbers and say we're tired of it 
we're not going to have it anymore. If there's anybody packing weapons on planet Earth, whether it's law enforcement or military or whatever, we're going to pack. And everybody needs to start packing. This, this whole thing about thinking you can do away with weapons when weapons can be made just about out of anything um, is, is foolishness. So uh, um, the whole gun control thing, you're, you're out of your minds. Um, the greatest crimes in the history of the world have been done by um, governments, by police and militant powers against the citizens. So if, you, if you're in favor of letting them take away your weapons, you're an idiot, an idiot of the worst kind. You're a danger to yourself and everyone else. As far as I'm concerned, somebody should sit you down and stick a sock in your mouth and say, you're not going to have that removed until you come into your right mind, you idiot. Let us educate you about history because you're lacking a hell of a lot of knowledge if you're for gun control. At any rate, uh, so some of the men, um, I'm not going to mention them all by name. I don't want them to be offended. I remember them all. I remember them all. I remember their faces. I pray for them. Um, I won't mention them all by names. So I hope they're not offended. And but um, um, I don't have their also. I don't have their permission to disclose their identities and their names. Okay. So so I might say their first names or something like that. Um, um, nobody will will know unless they stand up and say, "Yeah, that was me." And stuff. Um, a guy by the name of Jerry. Uh, some of the finest horsehair um, belts and, and crafts, um, purses or whatever, um, you could ever imagine, man. Hand woven tight. I mean, better than any machines, ever, better than I've ever seen. Horsehair products, you know, uh, a, lot, a lot of people don't even know, man, uh, um, what they look like. But uh, because it's they're kind of rare nowadays. Uh, there's arts and crafts that are that are how do you say fading away and 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 uh, I've seen I've seen uh, like Lobo Reyes uh, Lobo is not his name I'm just I'm just given different names just because and um, it's not not they're real persons they really exist but but let's say their you know, identities are under different names that I'm using okay and uh, and sand art, and we're talking. Uh, and I've seen videos of different types of sand art, you know, on YouTube, and 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 I've seen some uh, um, sand art uh, um, museums, pictures, photographs. But these guys, what I saw with my own eyes, what these guys would just do with uh, with sand, real sand. Um, um, I could, hard, I could hardly believe my eyes. And as far as I was concerned, uh, there wasn't anything in any of the museums or anything on YouTube that even came close to the to the detailed work of, of what some of these individuals were doing uh, behind prison walls, completely out of sight. And arts and crafts, man, that... Uh, I mean, you figure it, right? If you're locked up for an extended period of time and you have an artistic bent how good do you think you'd become and so I'm saying that there's some artists behind prison walls man that the world man is actually kind of depriving themselves from um, it's not just that these men seem to be forgotten and, and I know God remembers and knows them all by name and I do too and but what I'm saying is I'm saying that the system is messed up. It's 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 really wrong. Um, you give men years for for minor crimes that are so long and in such a dangerous setting that they that they can't almost impossible. It literally takes a miracle from God for them to be able to reintegrate into society afterwards. In other words, you're institutionalizing on purpose these these people. You're 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 enslaving them. Yeah, you take a young man that hasn't had a chance to, um, how do you say, find his way in society, um, crushed under oppression and poverty, slave wages, and so on and so forth, and you stick him into a environment where, you know, um, um, 
you know, lifers, murderers, rapists, etc., etc., where he's got to survive. Okay, after a while, um, um, they get institutionalized, and, and, and I'm not saying it takes very long either. Um, it can happen real quick, actually. Um, if you're a young person and you're and you're sent down for even three to five years, you can be you can become institution. You can become ruined for life. In other words, you know, uh, when you get out, you don't you you don't know how, and you can't, no matter how hard you try, reintegrate back into um, a, a a civil type of, of, of open society of freedom. And you're not you're not getting your meals every day. You're you're. You're not getting, um, how do you say, <coughs> told exactly from the time you wake up till the time you go to bed, you know, what your schedule is, you know. Um, people get institutionalized. They get, uh, um, how do you say, used to um, whatever environment that they're um, subjected to even if it's not a right environment and and so used to it that they they, they they can't adapt to any any type of other environment even if it's better it, 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 it becomes a way of life for them and I'm saying they're handing out sentences that are so long man for such minor crimes that they're turning people into lifelong institutionalized criminals or, or slaves or convicts or however you want to look at them and uh, and and a lot of these men are, are are just again their crime was just poverty they were just born into poverty and I'm not saying feel sorry for them I'm just I'm just stating this as a fact I'm saying the entire system is set up from the time people are born if you're born in, under the wealthy if you're born into how to make money and how to manage money and how to how to control your assets and you already have them that's a whole different world an entire different reality from somebody that doesn't have anything from somebody that has no network from somebody that's on the streets and it's a, a very 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 different reality and they're not given the education in public schools man on how to make money on how to grow money on how to on wealth and and why do you think that is again it's all oppression it's all design you are you are indoctrinated from the time you're born to be a servant to those that make the money out of thin air and frankly the rest of us should say that's enough of that bullshit we've had enough of their crap the rest of humanity should stand up to them and uh, well, what I'm saying is is that where the media is not allowed to go and um, or when they go they're always talking about how you know bad it is or how dangerous it is or how they don't they don't show man um, uh, these artists man uh, these uh, craftsmen um, and we're talking fading fading um, art forms fading cultural um, ancient you know ways are, are are being lost in the process and surprisingly um, s some for some reason somehow uh, they're being preserved um, to a degree to a little to a little bit to a lesser extent um, behind prison walls um, I'm saying that the art I saw behind prison walls was better than, as far as I'm concerned, better than, you know, of things I, I've seen in museums, what they consider are internationally famous artists, man. Um, better than art galleries. Better. Definitely better. Um, far superior, in my opinion. And I'm not just saying a little better. I'm talking about um, whole leagues better. And I don't know if it's a result of that. That's the only thing in their life that keeps them living and breathing.
so it causes a, a focus. It's kind of like good acting and 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 and, and any type of artistry. Uh, good music um, comes from um, a passion, and and typically the passion is from life experience. And if, if you're so crushed that uh, and so poor is that you've only got one like one thing that you're holding on to or very few things that keep you um, um, alive in other words something you're holding on to because your life is, is has been so thrashed and so beaten down and so oppressed it's amazing it's amazing what uh, type of um, um, talent and, and development uh, that uh, provokes uh, in people. Um, it's like uh, having everything squeezed out of you until you've got nothing but just this refined drop of, of of something in you that's that's just like okay this is all I've got and uh, and when you got that kind of focus man uh, I'm telling you the artwork I've seen the arts and crafts I've seen behind the walls man are are, uh, are superior um, uh, even the music um, you'd be surprised man there are some serious serious musicians um, I'm talking that that's what they do that's we're not talking that's what they do um, casually as a hobby we're talking that's what they do to stay alive and to breathe another day so the music um, the crafts, anything that's, you know, allowed that that they, that they can do, um, is 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 what they do, and they do it every day. And I'm telling you, they get really, really, really skilled, and really good, and 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 I'm talking about it because it's a story you you don't hear. You don't see. It's not mentioned. And when I saw somebody, you know, um, in one day, uh, put together a sand painting, um, say about four feet by four feet, might have been a little bit less than that, but roughly. Um, Let's say uh, even say nine, let's just say it was a nine square foot. Um, that was better. Again, my adoptive mother was an art specialist. She knew art forms from all over the world. So when I when I appraise art, I'm appraising it from a, a, like not just my lifetime of experience, but but what she brought into our house uh, from all over the planet, uh, art forms and. Uh, so uh, when I'm appraising art, I'm not appraising it from a novice uh, type perspective. I'm appraising it from a, a person um, who was one of the few uh, that had has her own private artwork in a museum um, um, to this day. So um, an art specialist herself, and uh, and so I. I was exposed to many forms of, of the fine arts from all over the world. So, so I know what I'm talking about when I say that this art was superior in quality to museums and to um, and to what you generally see out in this world. And it's 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 completely hidden away, and people don't even get to see it. And it's wrong. I'm saying at some point you gotta 
look at the system and say, damn it, this is unacceptable. Uh, it's, it's too messed up. It's one thing if, if somebody is habitually set on committing violent crimes, as far as I'm concerned, they should, the capital punishment should be brought back. But for the rest, which is a huge percentage of the prison population, they're, they're there by, because they're poor and because they're oppressed and for no other reason. Not really. Um, yeah, they got caught doing something, maybe. There's a whole bunch of people in there that were too poor to even afford an attorney to, to give them a proper um, defense, or they wouldn't be there at all, seriously. Um, wrongly charged, and just innocent people, man, that are just too damn poor to defend themselves. That's the truth, and it's a hard truth. I, I know public doesn't want to hear it, but it's the truth. There's a bunch of people. I would say at least 50% of the prison population does not belong in prison, at least. And um, then there's a whole percentage that's 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 guilty, yes, but over sentenced. They get sentenced to such a degree that by the time they get out, they don't know how to function again in the real world, and so they go back in and they commit a crime and go back in because some of them even will flat out tell you that if they ever do get released, they're going. The first thing they're going to do is commit a crime so they can go back in because they don't know how to survive any other way. They've been locked up so damn long. And that's, that's the hard damn truth, too. It's, it's wrong. Uh, they, they have been turned into, you know, a modern slave. And, and, they, and they know it, and they, and they admit it, and they, they'll flat out tell you, look, this, this is all I know. I've been locked up, and some of them since they were early teens or something. I mean, they've been locked up their whole damn lives. And, uh, they don't know anything else. And system is wrong. It's failed. All right. Bottom line is is that uh, what should occur is something say similar to what we got. God's law is the best. Okay. Period. And um, with God's law, there there is no such thing as a prison um, setting at all. It's like if you commit a crime worthy of death, you die. And, and if you commit a crime that's of, of property, then you actually pay the victim back by, by your own labor. And so in other words, instead of working for the state, instead of working for strangers, um, um, you, you work. So, so in other words, if somebody steals a bicycle or something like that, the worst sentence in the scriptures is a sevenfold return. So they'd have to return like the equivalent of seven bicycles to the person they stole the bicycle from. In other words, you, you get real retribution that way, and you don't get a, an oppressed, enslaved, corporate, you know, profiting prison system like, like we have today, where a few individuals that are rich and greedy and corrupt are profiting from oppressed, poor, poor-born citizens. Because that's really what the reality is. And um, if born into poverty... Uh, there's a good chance, um, a, a high percentage, a higher percentage, a much higher percentage that you're going to end up in prison. And uh, for an extended period of time, if not your entire life. And it's sad. It, it's, it's really sad. It's modern slavery. And, uh, and there's, there's no doubt that it's modern slavery. And... Uh, and I'm saying that instead of, since, again, crossover periods, it's damn near impossible for people to just suddenly change and go back straight to the biblical law um, from where you're at, okay? So I'm saying you could modify it. You could modify it, like, by having... Um, I know they have like uh, early release for, for good, but, but it's not really early release. It's mandatory sentencing for a certain time, and then you finally come up for parole hearings. And and some some of them don't care. They don't care anymore because they've been locked up too long. Even if you've been locked up for only five years, if say you're a 20 year old and you've been locked up for five years, that's like 25% of your life. And most of, the, most of that life prior to that, mommy and daddy was taking care of you. So, so it's really about 100% of your adult life 
if you got locked up at 20 years old and, and now you're 25 and, and you've, you really don't have any taste of the real world yet because you've been locked up pretty much your entire adult life. I'm saying that it's not easy to institutionalize somebody and it can happen that fast. A, fi a five year sentence is, I know because I did five years, it, it, it takes a miracle from God to be able to get back on your feet again. It really does. It takes a, a serious effort uh, on the individual's part, prayer, and it, it, and it takes God, actually, the real God, in their lives. Or um, that they have a network of law-abiding, real friends and family that, that really, really support them and really, really back them and help them get back on their feet. Um, and even then, without the good Lord in their lives, it's, it's still damn near impossible. The recidivism rate is extremely high for people that they call it get in religion. And I say you, you shouldn't do that because not all religious people qualify on that re recidivism um, statistic. It's, it's those that actually come to know the one true God have, have a much, 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 it's like 80% higher um, rate of success of not going back to prison. And uh, for the rest, it's, it's, it's about an 80% return rate. And the, probably the 20% of the rest, you know, committed crimes, but they just didn't get busted. So uh, what I'm getting at is, is uh, A, the Holy Bible should be a return to public education as soon as possible. Because B, when the Holy Bible is put into prisons and those that actually encounter the one true God have their life changed and, and, and with an 80% success rate of not going back to prison. And that should tell the whole world something, okay? There is a God and it takes God to live righteously. It really does. Now all of you who haven't gone to prison just because uh, 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 God wasn't in your life does not mean you did not commit a crime. In fact, I would, I'd be hard pressed to believe anybody that, that tells me otherwise. Because God is not a liar and he says all are sinners. And that word sinner is synonymous with criminal. In other words, God's saying that the entire world is, is nothing but criminals. And the whole, the whole proof of that was, again, when the woman was caught in adultery, he was like, look, the first one of you without sin, in other words, who's never committed a crime yourself, throw the stone, you know, and, and nobody could. In fact, uh, beginning with the eldest, in other words, the old people now, they know the truth, and they dropped the stone, and then everyone else did too. Because you're all criminals. Every, every last one of you, you know, straight up. So taking your fellow criminals and and beating them down to the point where they don't even um, know how to function outside of, of, of a institution is, is, is evil. It's wrong. So what it could be is that people for nonviolent offenses, like again, more than half the prison population is drug related. In other words, they, they were just drug addicts. They, in other words, oppressors are making life so damn miserable people have to intoxicate themselves just to get through another day. Man, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's evil. At any rate, so these guys are in prison and women. Most of them, you know, drug addicts and uh, miserable. And we're medicating because they just, this world as it's set up from the time they were born into poverty crushes them, chews them up, spits them out. It's, it's, it's wrong, it's evil. The wages have, have been, I've studied it, I've stu looked very closely at it on my treaties of greed and corruption. Wages per the cost of living have been going down, down, down steadily my entire life. And to the point where now, if minimum wage was the same as it was per the cost of living back in, say, um, the early 60s or 
or even the early 70s just that long, long ago we're talking just four or five decades ago if it was this the same rate minimum wage was set to the same rate of the cost of living percentage wise from then till now a minimum wage today would be over twenty dollars an hour and it's not instead it's, it's not even half of that so what's been happening is is people um, as their wages go down and down and down compared to the cost of living are forced into communal situations where they have to live with roommates and so on and so forth or or they get married and then they have both mom and dad are, are having to go to work so they can't raise their kids right and it's under this corrupt evil satanic system and I'm saying everybody everybody you're all suffering and when are you gonna say you, you've had enough when when are you going to stand up and say, that's enough? We're not your slaves. You're going to pay us a living wage. You're going to pay us a proper wage. Across the board. Stand together. Not just for minimum wage, because minimum wage will continue to go down. Not up. And when they increase it by five cents an hour or something like that, that's, again... It's already well below 50% of what it was just a few decades ago compared to the cost of living, compared to real estate prices, compared to energy prices, compared to what they keep. You look at their raises. Look at all the raises the damn lawmakers have been giving themselves. And ask yourself, has minimum wage gone up commensurately? Not just no, but hell no. So when is the public going to say, that's, a, that's enough? When? When are you going to get mad enough? <sighs> okay. So these men and women in prison, right, um, should have, um, as far as I'm concerned, I would, let, I'm just letting you know what I would do, man if you put me in power you know, to try to right some of these wrongs and yeah, cross the board first of all and um, we we need infrastructure needs to be rebuilt across America and um, most of the cities across America are, are working on pipes that are like so damn old and that that they're that they're in danger of, of the white water and black water systems of failing completely and the way to renovate the infrastructure of America is to take all the all the rail systems and create an entire subterranean network of tunnels where we build 21st century maglev technology for all goods transits where we for for private hauling of smaller goods household goods and storage we create um, automated trucking systems that again are 21st century technologies all hydroelectric totally clean so there's no pollution in the tunnels you know in other words you still have ventilation systems just to have clean air but but it'll it'll be all completely computer controlled and uh, totally self-operating and you still have drivers to maintain in case of unforeseen failures in the electronics and in the uh, in the uh, self-automated system to keep everything running to identify things that perhaps your electronic sensors wouldn't and uh, and as such but by and large they could be behind the wheel and and watching their favorite programs or or taking classes educating themselves or doing their hobby crafts or whatever they want and just kind of like um, rail systems today but for engineers and, and conductors in other words, once it's up and running, it pretty much is taking care of itself and, until you're having to, you know, come into a stop or, or slow or whatever. And even that's all automated. So but what I'm getting at is upgraded to 21st century technologies and maglev systems and um, hyperconductive systems, all um, subterranean. And so we're clearing up the surface area and when we clear up the surface area then we're allowed to um, while we're 
upgrading the infrastructure subterranean. All of it subterranean under all the cities. So they'll come up to the surface. Now, and all the surface ones that go to the existing homes then, again, would all be handled subterranean so you're not slowing or, or stopping existing traffic anymore having to dig up the old pipes and old system. And, and frankly, it, it, it's all so um, corrupted and, and it's such a state of decay that uh, you may as well just start over, just like I'm saying, totally subterranean with brand new... Um, and I'm not talking. I'm not talking pecs. I'm not talking about any type of of uh, pliable situations for the for the hard backbones of the major conduits. I'm talking about um, pipes that are, are either they they've got new technology that fuses um, either are either glass and and different types of surfaces in the glass. And in other words, you can even create the shark technology or the shark skin technology for the for the biofilm is resistant to um, how do you say algae and, and other organisms for the white for the white water in other words for our clean water um, filtration systems can be set between these um, hard conduits wherever the junctures are just again for earth shifting and so on and so forth they'll, they'll have a certain every time you have a section of pipe you're connected with like let's call it a giant rubber washer you know for lack of a, a better explanation and where there's a certain amount of give because you are using a hard core a glass lined or 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 otherwise synthetically lined bacterial resistant piping for all your white water and in those junctions you can have periodic filtrations and and periodic uh, um, sensors for the water con water control, water quality control, and not just at the, um, how do you say, the inlets and the outlets. Of course, the major filtration is going on at the inlets and the outlets, okay? But at the same time, you can have periodic sensors and periodic filtration anywhere along that piping, and to the point where it can be replaced into the indefinite future at the, s at the junction sectors, even if there's earthquakes. The junction sectors can then just be, you know, um, refitted with whatever a new section of pipe in between the two junctions. And um, but the bottom line is, is that we're not operating with 21st century technologies, and 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 prisons are suffering, society suffering, um, things are going downhill. We're not we're not going in a in a the direction of proper vision any longer. In other words, it's almost like they're 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 it's almost like they're tossing their hands up on our nation. And uh, they're I mean, take a look at the the seven D technologies and some of these. Uh, and I hate to say this, but stop sending money to Sharia nations. Islam is filthy. It's disgusting. It's a shame and a blight on humanity. And the rest of the world needs to say so. If there's anybody that belongs behind bars, it's Muslims. Child raping culture. Disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Harming innocent children is one of the worst things you can do. Guaranteed to send your soul to the everlasting flames of damnation. And I'm saying that people behind prison walls this day are far less criminals than these fucking scum. Again, forgive my French, but I'm really angry about it. It's a shame it exists. It's it's that deplorable. And if you're not examining Islam and really examining it um, and coming to the same conclusion, uh, then I'm disappointed because because apparently um, such ignorance truly is life threatening. When God says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, that's one of them. Not knowing how evil Islam is and letting Muslims into your nation is is idiotic. Self-destructively idiotic. There's a reason Muslims haven't been in our nation. They don't belong here. And frankly, they belong behind bars worldwide. But so I'm ashamed to admit that when you look at Dubai 
in some of these places where we've been sending money for their filthy oil. We don't need their oil. And if we did, you know, um, we don't have to pay them for it. They're criminals. They're, they're a criminal scum, every last one of them. They belong behind bars. And, uh, any rate, uh, a bunch of them are just so damn ignorant they don't they don't know their own worldview, and and so they belong behind bars just because, um, just because of that. In other words, they don't care enough about their own lives to know what to, what cult they're in, and they don't care about anybody else then either. That means they're so damn stupid they're dangerous. In other words, God doesn't make stupid people. He doesn't make trash, but pe people turn themselves into it by being lazy, by being apathetic by not using what he gave them that called their brains. So, with regards to the half of the prison population that's in there, I would, I would, and again, I'd ha because our nation, in my opinion, is at a state of emergency, I would declare a state of emergency for, for not just health care, for not just um, the prison population, for not just the low wages, for not just uh, the, um, how do you say, the attack on the basic divinely designed family model, and but for the, the actual criminal oppression at the highest levels. And deal with those arrests first because those are the greatest criminals on planet Earth right now. Their crimes are not just against one person, but they're against all humanity and all life on this planet. And I cover that in Crimes Against Humanity and Depopulation. Again, um, my notes, Strategies of Warfare, Conspiracy Theories are Plain Truth, and my notes, and sadly people are so overworked, they don't, they don't, and even the ones that aren't overworked don't take the time to read very much anymore because they're so used to a multimedia environment. But these notes um, are, have links to multimedia presentations, so even if you don't want to read them, just start clicking on some of my um, documentary um, presentations within them and just watch the documentaries. Something, at least. Educate yourself, please, for your, for your sake and the sake of your children and, and generations to come. Okay, so I declare a state of emergency. Um, this open immigration policy is lame. Uh, you could be taking, um, say, nonviolent prisoners, whatever, drug, at, drug addicts, educating them and giving them um, options to come out of crushing poverty and give them purpose, a purpose-driven life um, under God. And, and let them know that, that and let people know that, that, that it is with God, that He is the answer, that He's the one you need in your life in order to have the strength to live righteously in order to even have the desire to live righteously. And uh, so education, again, needs to return to the Bible because that's just the way it is, like it or not, folks. And this reality, the observable universe, is under God Almighty, by God Almighty, and His Word governs it. Whether you like it or not, yes, it does. And if you're in denial, um, you can read my notes, Denial of Reality, or, or, or Observable Divine Judgments, and open up your eyeballs and, and take a look at reality, okay? His word governs his creation, yes it does, and anybody saying otherwise, as far as I'm concerned, is either an ignoramus or have made themselves deliberately stupid, self-destructively stupid. And you can read my notes on stupidity or, or, or mentally challenged um, in that regard. Cults of evolution, atheism, yeah, are the cults of the insane. Any of those notes. Um, don't be a fool, etc., etc. Okay, there is a God, and He is large and in charge. And the sooner you acknowledge that, the better off you will all be. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the one true and only God. And uh, the sooner mankind comes to that realization, the better off mankind will be. Yes, absolutely. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And um, in declaring an emergency, 
And the over-sentenced prison population um, would receive a crossover period where they would be given educational and vocational training uh, under, again, biblically, with biblical values. And again, telling them in no uncertain terms that they need God in their life in order to live a righteous life, a lawful life, a good life, a blessed life. And, um, and then that solves. So that crossover period would be used to handle um, all of the labor that whatever the free um, um, citizens, the lawful citizens that are already, you know, living righteously um, are not doing. Whether it's um, picking um, fresh fruit off the trees or, or whatever, okay? And so, so what I'm getting at is you don't need seasonal immigration, you don't need immigration at all to do that labor because we have an entire prison population of more uh, than, than uh, a million individuals that would qualify to do um, all types of, 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 of labor that would be, how do you say, a part of their crossover period from institutionalization back into the free world. And the ones that are there, it would just, let's say, um, instead of instead of constantly being behind walls, it would enable them, you know, as part of their life, in order to get out and have some fresh air, and uh, and and you let them have part of the harvest, so they have better food um, behind the walls, instead of uh, some of the crap that they're eating, some of the gruel and mush that they're eating now. So I, I I tend to think, in other words, I tend to think that even on a voluntary level, you would get a whole bunch of the over-sentenced prison population that would participate in the crossover program. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think I am, because uh, I've been there. I know what it's like. And um, when you got men willing to go fight forest fires and risk their lives from behind the prison walls just so they could get out just for a little while and I'm not talking about escape I'm, ta I'm talking about where they get to just be outside of the prison walls even for a little while so if they're willing to do that and picking fresh fruit and, and that they get to also take back with them some of it and, 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 and eat on and share you know with others and that I tend to think would have a, a voluntary participation program um, um, across the United States easily. Okay. Uh, letting anybody into our nation that does not agree to follow our nation's laws and rules and Islam is one of those absolutely that Muslims do not agree to follow our existing culture, our existing laws, they don't. They don't. And as such, they cannot be. They are inherently subversive criminals. They cannot be walking loose in our nation under our existing laws. And I'm not saying change those laws. I'm saying don't let criminal Muslims in our nation. Period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And stop giving criminal Muslims money for their freaking oil. Worldwide. You're out of your minds if you do. Muslims, by and large, are living in nations that have to import over 80% of their food because God himself saying, your cult is so damn evil you don't even deserve to eat to them. And that's the truth. So stop sending them money. We've been building their cities, man. Look at Dubai, man. 7D technologies in their malls and stuff. You know, show us here in America, man. There's such a modern architecture and technology and open display. Our nation's going downhill under these globalists that are so damn wicked, perverse, pedophiles, and corrupt. They're actually blessing, you know, scum like the demonic cults of Islam. Why they destroy our nation because it's biblically based. Yeah, and I'm saying I'd declare a, nas a national state of emergency. I'd bring back patriotism. I'd bring back made in America, and I'd do it like right under, again, 
right under the policy of the national emergency. And again, it's just a matter of taking over, not taking over, but taking back our right to mint our own currency under our U.S. Constitution that was guaranteed us in the War of Independence. So we mint our own national currency free from the satanic New World Order agendas of the World Bank. And as far as I'm concerned, I, I would encourage every nation on planet Earth to do the same thing and we all take the power from, from the globalists and put out an international warrant for their arrests for their many crimes against humanity. And so that there isn't a place on planet Earth where they can go hide. There isn't a hole deep enough for them to dig. And, and bring them, you know, into accountability for all their crimes against us. The working masses, under the state of national emergency, I would uh, actually, um, the IRS system, in other words, the income tax system, would be done away with, gone. And I'm not saying all those people wouldn't have jobs anymore, but as far as I'm concerned, that those tax collectors for the for the satanic families are 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 presently serving some of the worst criminal scum in the history of the world. And instead, what I would do is I'd have them monitor uh, programs um, for um, alleviating the oppression by by actually instead of an income tax an actual income credit for, for being overly taxed and oppressed your entire life where, where all mothers or, or if it wants to be a stay at home dad if that's your model one any models of families that have one working parent and one parent at home would be giving an income credit a subsidy under the national emergency system to return to that proper value, that proper system, because you need somebody at home raising your children properly, period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Now, I don't I don't care what um, the naysayers say. The proper model for a family is a one man and one woman. Father and mother, husband and wife, period. So that's the model I'm talking about subsidizing to, to return back to the biblical model because God knows best, yes he does. In fact, I can defend item by item, you know, in the scriptures by his grace of how everything he says in his law is absolutely correct and absolutely right. Now I know they like to pick on different things like, what about eating shrimp and stuff? It's like, you know, stick a sock in it, you fool. You don't even you don't even have an idea of what the scriptures mean. You don't. You don't know God, you don't you don't know the author, you haven't talked to him, you haven't had him explain it to you. You don't you don't even know what you read. You don't. The carnal mind does not understand the things of God. You have to have his Holy Spirit or or you or you're completely clueless with what you read and you misinterpret everything in his law, everything everything from Genesis to Revelation and uh, and all the canonized divinely inspired uh, scriptures so the bottom line is uh, um, I know from God exactly what those scriptures mean and, and, and I know that he knows best I have learned the hard way God knows best he does and everything in his law is absolutely correct and it's totally defensible 100 percent there's nothing in the holy bible that is not defensible by knowledge by facts by reason by reality observable reality nothing and anybody thinking so has um, not understood what they read or uh, they themselves are making turning themselves into a stupid self-destructive ignoramus a fool on their way to the everlasting flames of damnation they don't even care enough about their own soul to to examine um, reality enough to, to lead them to um, he who is behind that observable reality, the one true God. And as such, their opinion, in my opinion, is meaningless and worthless and frankly shouldn't even be listened to by anybody. Disregarded totally. Because if they don't care enough about their own soul, there's no way they care about anybody else. 
In other words, anything, any gibberish coming out of their mouth is a waste of time and energy. Now, uh, I'm not saying I don't care about those that are presently on a path towards damnation. I do. I care enough to tell them the truth. You're on a path towards damnation. And you need to come to your senses, and you need to come to your senses right quick, like, because if you don't breathe your next breath, uh, you're not headed to the good place. So, in other words, um, we could be rebuilding our infrastructure here in America into the 21st century technologies. We could, just the same way they crossed over with Clean Air Acts by having to put whatever um, emission restrictions on your exhaust. Uh, we could it's just to simply cross over and mandate that all engines, all hydrocarbon engines have to be replaced with uh, hydroelectric motors uh, completely and totally non-polluting and non-fossil fuel burning. Yes, we could. And, and for all your convenience stations and stuff, that could all be... all. Everything changes. Business models change all the time, and that's one that needs to change. Uh, when we go to uh, our shopping, you know, whether it's supermarkets or malls or whatever, um, to get our goods for our household items or whatever, and while the car is being parked in a hydroelectric world, and it would be automatically recharged. Again, it could be inductance. In other words, just built into the parking lot, whether it's tiered, below ground, above ground, it doesn't matter. Entire parking lots can be covered with, with um, a solar, so you ha all have covered parking year round. Um, solar cells, solar panels, man, for over all that asphalt. Right now, it's just going to waste, man. And it's just heating up the planet, um, all that blacktop. So, uh, in other words, we could be stepping into the 21st century under proper leadership, proper vision, and all that infrastructure construction would put everybody who wants to make a living wage, um, and I'm talking about a wage where one person only has to work in a family to pay for your house and all of your bills and you still have enough for good morale, in other words, to take vacations like the rich and famous do. Now, I'm not talking about going necessarily all over the world like they do with golfing every other week and stuff. You know, that's that's just throwing it in our faces. And, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, um, I can't tell you how many people uh, feel like wanting to string such incredible, arrogant bastards and bitches from hell up for doing so. We don't need to see the lifestyle of the rich and famous thrown in our faces when we're scrapping and praying just to stay alive. Now I know there's brothers and sisters in Christ that tell me I shouldn't use such language, but sometimes there just isn't any other way to convey to convey, I'm not really conveying the level of rage I feel against the oppressors these days. And God's going to take them out, every last one of them, if they don't come to their senses. A good name is, is, is to be treasured more above your petty little pieces of paper with pictures on it called money. And right now, none of you oppressors have a good name. And you're headed to the flames. You are headed to the flames of damnation. For what you're doing to the rest of us. It's wrong. It's evil. So, all those people working for creating a new America, in other words, and, and not a redefined America under the Satanic New World Order, but for returning to our biblical heritage and proper values, a proper family model, and Father Knows Best type programming instead of the filth we've got these days. Disgusting and leave it to Beaver instead of, you know, um, Modern Family. Uh, disgusting. I'm sorry. If you're a man and you feel like tiptoeing through the tulips and acting like a little fairy, I, I don't respect you. As far as I'm concerned, you're demonically controlled and possessed. You've got, some, you've got an effeminate spirit, and it's disgusting. You're a man. You've got nuts between your legs, man. Stand up and act like it.
Now I know everybody struggles with their own sin. And those that we don't personally struggle with seem especially disgusting to us. And so, forgive me if I'm a little bit hard on in a man that thinks it's a woman. That to me says there's something wrong with your cranium. Not just not just your cranium, but your whole spirit. You, you've been, how do you say, possibly you've been influenced by all the hormones and everything in your city water when you were developing. I'm not saying it's entirely your fault. I'm saying spiritual and physical influences and cultural influences are perverting society to an unacceptable level under the scum that presently control the money. They're pedophiles and perverts, all of them. They're disgusting. They're so wealthy, man, that, 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 that they luxuriate themselves and their vices. And that's what's influencing our culture, and that's what's taking us down. That's what's destroying our nation. That's what's turning our nation into a, a, a nation of slavery. We now are basically, our, our GDP is, is on weapons. In other words, right now America is set up under these people's vision to only sustain itself by continuing acts of warfare um, and, and, and by selling um, their weapons all over the world to incite warfare. So right now America's economy, more than half of it is dependent upon a bloodshed in violence and it's wrong, it's evil, and it's under the auspices of the scum that are kissing the butts of those that print money out of thin air, issue credits out of thin air. In other words, those that are in control of the World Bank right now are just plain scum. And the rest of us need to say so. They're scum. They've been scum. Their family are demonic scum. And the rest of the world needs to stand up to them and arrest them. They're scum. They're perverts. They're disgusting. They're not refined. They're not better. They're suffering from delusions of grandeur to the point where the rest of us are all suffering under their vices. Why we stagnate and even decline in, in, in advancements in almost every way. Now, I'm not saying the technology isn't coming there. God's still blessing the world, but, but it's not being used because we don't have proper leadership. Period. No fans or butts about it. Because if we did, this is what they would be doing. Exactly what I'm saying. A national state of emergency needs to be declared because our nation is in serious decline and in jeopardy while we're letting enemies completely just overrun our borders. None of this, you know, playing around with it any longer is, is acceptable. It's not acceptable. America, instead of being drugged down by other nations that didn't set up their nations under the biblical model, needs to be the anchor. How do you say the, the example that you need to set up your nations under the biblical model? And we can't do that if, we're, if we start catering to the very vilest scum on earth, which is Muslims. They are the equivalent of Satanists, period. Whether they call themselves it or not, Islam is, is synonymous with Satanism. It is thoroughly demonic. It is a demonic, perverse, disgusting cult. And when our leaders are, are catering and kowtowing to Islam or anything about that, that means they are selling out their soul to the devil. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, and they all need to repent, and they all need to be upbraided by the rest of humanity. Saint, if there's any sane part left, you need to stand up now. You need to stop being silent. You need to stop letting all the devils squalor in the streets and, and clamor for their rights to be perverts and, and to slaughter their own babies, etc., 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 and you need to say, That's enough! We've heard enough from the little minions from hell. You've had your time. It's over. Period. In Yehoshua's mighty name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's time the devils and their minions were put under arrest. 
and it's time the overly sentenced, poor, and oppressed and crushed were released and given a decent life, a chance to, to live under an acceptable wage, a living wage. National state of emergency, you, you fix the prices of food for a while. It's, it's, it's been that way for the longest, whether you realize it or not. But you just acknowledge it, that, that what it takes to live and survive becomes an intrinsic part of education and an intrinsic part of life. And, and, and you fix that cost always, if you're going to have a monetary system at all until Christ returns, you fix that cost so that there is nobody starving to death. Wrong! That's wrong! That's evil! And it doesn't have to be. And it's all because of the arrogant and lazy and apathetic and viceful leadership all over this planet that caters and kowtows to the vilest scum the world's ever known. They don't care about you. They'll put out a little media presentations or a website telling you their wonderful visions, but do you see any of that wonderful stuff ever coming to pass? Not just no, but hell no. It's because that's all bullshit. That's all their lies that they tell you to, to maintain their, their power and control while they actually tighten their grip on you and make you more and more their slave, more and more oppressed, and more and more of you dead, suffering and dying. So I remember those that are behind bars, and I, and I remember that they're uh, oppressed, and that there's a whole bunch of them that don't belong there, and some of them just simple. Um, they're, um, they were like little children when they first locked up and they've been locked up their whole life so now they're grown but they they were like let's say they were uh, I, I, I don't want to say simple I want to say uh, um, challenged everybody has their own challenges and some people are challenged in that they don't have a, a loving mother and father uh, they don't have somebody that, that raised them right they don't have an a, a, a elder brother or sister saying Hey, little brother. Hey, little sister. Man, don't do that, man. That's that's gonna that's gonna send you down a path of a really hard life, and a life you're not really gonna like. It, it, it might even kill you. Instead, let's do this, and, and 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 lead them in a good way. So everybody's everybody's designed by God to be interdependent, and there is not enough. How do you say good people doing enough good? Um like gambling, okay? Gambling's a multi-billion dollar industry worldwide, annually. Um, if you're gonna gamble, if you're just gonna throw your money away, uh, why not uh, invest some of that in the returns that God promises? Now, gambling, you think there's there's a chance, a return that, that you might get, or you get some entertainment, enjoyment out of it. But I'm saying, why not take some of that? I'm not, I'm not saying you can take all of it. In other, in other words, if that's your form of entertainment, and, and you enjoy it, I'm not saying take all of it, but I'm saying why not take some of that and say, you know what, um, God, actually, it's not even a gamble, it's not even a risk, it's a 100% insured investment on your return. So, uh, more than that. In other words, he says, and, and his word cannot be broken, that if you even give a glass of cold water, and even in the name of one of his messengers, or even in the name of one of his prophets, let alone in his name, um, to somebody that's thirsty, and um, that you will not lose your reward. And um, that's that's God, and God doesn't lie. And so um, Pascal had the way uh, they call it Pascal's wager, but it's not a wager, not really. But the, uh, Pascal's wager is like, look, if the atheist and all use that imagine that there is no God, even though there's no other rational explanation for reality, for observable reality, and even though everything written in the Holy Bible is seen before our very eyes, completely coinciding and correlating 100%. Yes, it is. Read my note, Observable Divine Judgments, if, you, if you're lacking that knowledge. And, um, um, if they're right, um, then um, doing 
righteously or wickedly makes no difference whatsoever. You you die sooner or later at the hands of, of somebody or by, by natural processes and it's over if they're right. In other words, you're just a blip on the screen that came here randomly and you're gone. They're not right. They're, they're completely wrong. I've died many times now. I, I shouldn't say many. But let's say several documented recorded deaths and been resuscitated. So I know what the hell I'm talking about. And most people that have not died do not know what the hell they're talking about when they talk about, when they think wrongly, that that death is just the end of your consciousness and that, and that there's no more, how do you say, awareness and that there's no more existence and that you're just gone. That's, that's, that's bullshit. It's stupid. It's a lie from hell. And, and... The breath of life God gave you, your spirit, uh, your consciousness actually separates from your your mass, your physical form at the point of what we call death. And that consciousness, that spirit goes on either to be with the Lord in a good way because you've made your peace with him and you know him, or it goes somewhere you don't want to go. Okay? I'm trying to be that brother now that says, hey little brother, hey little sister. I don't care what your age is, but if you don't know our Heavenly Father, you are headed in, in a direction you do not want to go. Make your peace with Him. Call upon the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Save my soul. And do it right now and mean it. And not just save your soul, but come into your life and let you know Him so that you learn from Him personally. Tell, ask Him to open your ears so you can hear His Holy Spirit voice guiding you all your days in your life decisions strengthening you to, to live righteously in order to that by the time you breathe your last you enter into your rest the rest of God paradise which is awesome beyond words and far far superior to anything you can even imagine you want to go there it's so awesome i'm telling you i've tasted of it I've, I've only visited i've only been there a few times but every single time i visit i can't stop thinking about it because it's that awesome it's that it's that incredibly wonderful and everybody i'm talking everybody that i have ever encountered everybody I ever know and even from divine revelation i'm telling you everybody if you understood how good paradise is, you would stop sinning. You would you would pray God Almighty, look, do whatever you need to do in my existence to cause me to cease from sin. I want to be not only right now existing with you harmoniously and peacefully, but I want when I breathe my last to come into your presence joyously with a clear conscience. By your grace, having done everything I was designed to do having run the race, having finished this journey of incarnation well. It's not how you began, brothers and sisters. It's not even where you're at right now. It's, it's how you finish. Finish with Him. Finish well. Finish this race, your journey, your life well. Finish with the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop making excuses. Call upon him now. He is gracious. He is merciful. And he is willing to save even the vilest sinner among us. Or you wouldn't be breathing. The fact that you're still breathing means you have a chance to make your peace with God Almighty. So do it now. Don't put it off. Do it now. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. And cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Cleanse me from head to foot by your precious holy shed blood. Purge away all my filthy thoughts, words, deeds, anything I've ever done that is not in line with you and your word of righteous living. And come into my life and let me know you. Let me know you beyond all doubt. And fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Um, move upon me to obey your word to be baptized in your name and provide somebody that is full of your spirit to to baptize me be present when i am baptized and fulfilling your word to me that those who repent and are baptized will be given the promise the gift of your holy spirit your 
consciousness, your thoughts, who you are, upon and within my life. The Heavenly Father, I lift up all of my loved ones also, saying, save them as well. Just save them, Lord. You know how to shine into their life. You made them. You know what it's going to take to reach them. And I pray um, even for those that presently call themselves Satanists. I pray even for those uh, that call themselves Muslims. I pray for those all over the world and that do not know you at this moment in time, Lord Jesus. And shine into the lives of mankind and remove evil thoughts, words, ways, and deeds from all of us and cause us to be filled with your spirit and, and to see things as you do, Lord, to observe reality as you do and be filled with your virtues so that we um, learn to love one another as the everlasting family of God as we should. Amen. And uh, please uh, call on the Lord Jesus Christ right now. In your own way, in your own words, ask him to save your soul and your loved ones. Um, do it now. Amen.